chapter 15. And uh, we have finished up just with um, the new word in the web and it was terrific. And Mrs. Arable sorting out uh, her worries about Fern with the doctor. And this one is called The Crickets. The crickets sang in the grasses. They sang a song of summer's ending, a sad monotonous song. Summer is over, summer is over and gone. Over and gone, over and gone. Summer is dying, dying. The crickets felt it was their duty to warn everybody that summertime cannot last forever. Even on the most beautiful days in the whole year, the days when summer is changing into fall, the crickets spread the rumors of sadness and change. Everybody heard the song of the crickets. Avery and Fern Arable heard it when they walked the dusty road. They knew that school would soon begin again. The young geese heard it and knew that they would never be little goslings again. Charlotte heard it and knew that she hadn't had much time left. Mrs. Uckerman, at work in the kitchen, heard the crickets and sadness came over her too. Another summer gone, she sighed. Lurvy, at work building a crate for Wilbur, heard the song and knew it was time to dig potatoes. Summer is over and gone, repeated the crickets. How many nights to frost, sang the crickets. Goodbye, summer, goodbye, goodbye. The sheep heard the crickets and they felt so uneasy that they broke a hole in the pasture fence and wandered up into the field across the road. The gander discovered the hole and let his family through and they walked to the orchard and ate apples that were lying on the ground. The little maple in the swamp heard the cricket song and turned bright red with anxiety. Wilbur was now the center of attention on the farm. Good food and regular hours were showing results. Wilbur was a pig any man would be proud of. One day, more than a hundred people came to see him stand, came to stand at his yard and admire him. Charlotte had wor written the word radiant, and Wilbur really looked radiant as he stood in the golden sunlight. Yeah, that was our other one, wasn't it? Um, when Charlotte's web had said some pig, Wilbur had tried hard to look like some pig. When Charlotte's word said terrific, Wilbur had tried to look terrific, and now that the web said radiant, he did everything possible to make himself glow. It was not easy to look radiant. Wilbur threw himself into it with a will. He would turn his head slightly and blink his long eyelashes. Then he would breathe deeply, and when his audience grew bored, he would spring into the air and do a backflip with a half twist. As this, the crowd would yell and cheer, How's that for a pig? And Zuckerman would ask, well pleased with himself. That pig is radiant. Some of Wilbur's friends in the barn worried for fear that all this attention would go to his head and make him stuck up, but it never did. Wilbur was modest. Fame did not spoil him. He still worried about the future. He could hardly believe that a mere spider would be able to save his life. Sometimes at night he would have a bad dream. He would dream that men were coming to get him with knives and guns. But it was only a dream. In the daytime, Wilbur usually felt happy and confident. No pig ever had truer friends, and he realized that friendship is one of the most satisfying things in the world. Even the song of the crickets did not make Wilbur too sad. He knew it was almost time for the county fair, and he was looking forward to the trip. If he could distinguish himself at the fair and maybe win some prize money, he was sure Zuckerman would let him live. Charlotte had her worries of her own, but she kept quiet about those. One morning, Wilbur asked her about the fair. You're going with me, aren't you, Charlotte, he said. Well, I don't know, replied Charlotte. The fair comes at a bad time for me. I shall find it inconvenient to leave home, even for a few days. Why, asked Wilbur. Oh, I just don't feel like leaving my web. Too much going on around here. Please come with me, begged Wilbur. I need you, Charlotte. I can't stand going to the fair without you. You've just got to come. No, said Charlotte. I believe I better stay home and see if I can get some work done. What kind of work? asked Wilbur. Egg laying. It's time I made an egg sack and filled it with eggs. I didn't know you could lay eggs, said Wilbur in amazement. Oh, sure, said the spider. I'm versatile. What does versatile mean? Full of eggs? asked Wilbur. Certainly not, said Charlotte. Versatile means I can turn with ease from one thing to another. It means that I don't have to limit my activities to spinning and trapping and stunts like that. 
Why don't you come with me to the fairgrounds and lay your eggs there, pleaded Wilbur. It would be wonderful fun. Charlotte gave her, her web a twitch and moodily watched it sway. I'm afraid not, she said. You don't know the first thing about egg laying, Wilbur. I can't arrange my family duties to suit the management of the county fair. When I get ready to lay eggs, I have to lay eggs, fair or no fair. However, I don't want you to worry about it. You might lose weight. We'll leave it this way. I'll come to the fair if I possibly can. Oh, good, said Wilbur. I knew you wouldn't forsake me just when I needed you most. All that day, Wilbur stayed inside, taking life easy in the straw. Charlotte rested and ate a grasshopper. She knew she couldn't help Wilbur much longer. In a few days, she would have to drop everything and build the beautiful little sack that would hold her eggs. And the next one is called Off to the Fair.